tracking pin is going to go into the posterior superior iliac spine on the opposite side of where I'm standing and I'm going to lean it caudad and medial because the paramedian incisions uh, will be right next to that patient reference pin and you want it to be out of the way and you want to eliminate or minimize line of sight issues. The camera is going to be right there at the base of the uh, table or at the foot of the table looking up and everything is going to be designed to allow us to use all our instruments and minimize line of sight issues. All right, draping the arm. Some people drape the patient. I like draping the arm, but it's always doable. You just have to plan ahead. And you have to have a team that's used to using this machine. First ex exciting part of the case, just that sound just makes me feel like, okay, we're going to do a <coughs> surgery today. All right, once I do the O-arm spin, I pull the O-arm out if necessary and bring in the C-arm. The C-arm is always set up on the opposite side of where I'm going to do the T-lift so that it can come in and take spot shots. So the first thing I do is I create a, draw, a long line down the midline. The clinical midline is really long. Now, I also now want to make the line that goes this way directly in line with the disc of L4-5. So I'm looking up on the screen and I've got this going down on a lateral image right down the bullseye. Put a little line here and I make a long perpendicular line. So now the surgical target side is two finger breaths over. That's about four centimeters. I make a long line there. And the length of the incision is two finger, two finger breaths, in part because that's the size of each screw sleeve and they need to stick out of the skin later so I can pass the rod. So I call it the two finger roll. Two fingers out, two fingers long for every one level. And then I pre-inject everything with Marcane because I'm still a believer in the gate theory. I think it's part of the whole ERAS strategy. So here's the navigation tracking pin. It's firmly fixed into the PSIS. It's angling caudad and medial because see where the incisions are. If I had it more north and lateral, it would impede my ability to get through this surgical corridor, so target site. I planned out the two incisions. Now the hard thing is the fascia, north and lateral, it would impede my ability to get through this surgical corridor. So he's thin, but sometimes on a non-thin patient, the fascia is way deep. And when I did open surgery, I used to use Bovi for everything, but now I just want to get all the way through in one fell swoop. It can bleed a little bit when I first start, but once we pack this, it will stop bleeding very easily. Nav dilator. So you can use the nav dilator to confirm that you're at the correct facet joint. And you want to do this before you get all crazy because if you accidentally strip the wrong facet joint, it's no longer minimally invasive. Four, five. I'm going to now release all the tendon attachments to the multifidus. Strip, and I can get my finger all around, all the way around the facet joint. Simply packing this with an opened up sponge like a Raytac, and also doing a little bit of extra stripping and cleaning. It's really nice in terms of quickly getting down there and controlling bleeding. You do the same thing on the ipsilateral side. And you want to be able to get all the way around the facet joint with your finger, the whole thing circumferentially. We call that the San Francisco twirl. You need to be able to get your finger all the way around like this named after a visiting surgeon from San Francisco that I try to explain the importance of that. And that's how we memorialize that name. Now I can feel with the pulp of my finger, the lamina, and with my, the tip of my fingernail, the rise of the spinous process. And I can get my finger all the way around the facet joint. Twirling my finger all the way around. There's a little tendon at the four o'clock position that I'm going to release. Oh, that felt good. Now, if the patient has a 
huge Oscar fitted cap. Like sometimes it measures over a centimeter. I want to reduce that down so when I drop the retractor, it doesn't sit perched up and lead to a lot of muscle creep. So I'll take the Lexel Ranger. What it is. I will put this down closed. It's a tight fit over my finger and I can percutaneously morselize that cap. Don't try to pull it out. You just want to morselize it. You can remove it once the retractor is in. All right, so I've verified that this is accurate. And I've done some internal validation, so I know of a fixed point, And I make sure that it all looks right, feels right, and everything is consistent. If you have navigation, then you can utilize what I call the cheating technique. So instead of using a gem sheeting needle, which can be challenging if you have like a little bump, especially the mammillary process, it keeps shifting you someplace different than the optimal entry point, then like in open surgery, we just use the five millimeter burr and create the perfect starting hole screw. Now, what do I do before I do that? I do internal validation. So I surf down the TP. That feels good. I go to the edge, just dropped off. Go to the other edge, just dropped off. Go lateral. And then I should feel that little rise right there. Uh-huh. That's how I make sure that everything's internally validated. Everything has to be consistent and line up. Extreme care required. Soft touch. You just want to create a starting hole. Do that at every level all at once. And then I find that hole with the gear shift probe. I'll show you that in a second. Beauty. It's very elegant. So same thing. I'm feeling, I feel that little crotch. It looks like the pedicle, smells like the pedicle, tastes like the pedicle. So I'm not going to step in it. All right, so I've made the little starting holes with a five millimeter burr very carefully. Now I'm going to use this straight gear shift probe that's navigated. I'm going to find that little hole, and then I'm going to just let it pull me down, just like in open surgery. All righty, so how hard is it to find that hole? About that hard. Now I'm just going to let it pull me down. Don't force anything. And I'm sure you know from open surgery, you can feel this going down. It's like, it's like an invitation. Please come in. It just feels so good. Look at that. It's going to be perfect surprisingly easy to find. So I just found that other screw hole. Now, if you, I don't know if you can notice, but there's a little red dot on the gear shift. That's at 45 millimeters. So look at that. Let's see. Why don't we put in a 45 screw? Because it looks like it's perfect. Did I find the hole again that easily? It's crazy. But it is what it is. Wow, this bone is really, really rock hard. Now, whenever I have trouble like this, I stop and ask myself, is that really like that? Or am I getting fooled by a problem with navigation? So I immediately go toward internal validation and verification mode. Call that the happy beep. Now I'm going to do the internal validation on the metal. Oh, yes, doctor. Same thing here. Oh, yes. Now, if I have to, I will tap this in because I do not want to plunge. That is going to be a good bite. Okay, I'm just past that sclerotic component, and now I can feel it pulling me down. All right, so now I've got the screw on navigation. I don't have anything other than the previous screw holes, and I can feel it pop into that little opening. And as I advance, it should feel like it's pulling me down, i.e., it should feel like a screw, no doubt. And that feels really good. And mostly, I'm just letting it pull me down. Oh, 
yeah, he's got good bone. Oh, yes, it's pulling me down. It feels like pedicle, looks like pedicle, tastes like pedicle. Other side, whoo, that's going to be a good bite, too. In April. All right, so I've got the screws in. I'm going to check it on C-arm to make sure it's perfect, but you can see how these rod sleeves are going to get in my way if I want to do surgery. And the incisions are so small that there's not enough room for the rod sleeves and a retractor in there. So this system has the advantage that you can take off the rod sleeves and the tulip temporarily. And we'll put it back on right before we finish the construct. This is a huge advantage, actually, because now I can also do the whole surgery with one O-arm spin instead of two. That greatly improves workflow and decreases radiation exposure to the patient and the team. Lots of advantages. All right, here's the radiographic summary. I've got the screws in. That's the AP. That's the lateral. All righty, we're going to put the dressing on. So that's the incisions. It's only about like two finger breaths long. Um, that's a, that's a, a Telfa, small tegaderm, half a tegaderm for that one, the computer navigation tracking pin. We'll probably not change it at, at all and then just remove it in three days and they can shower with it. They can practically keep their underwear on for this case. <laughs> <laughs>